it's Natasha from YML Homeschool and today I wanted to show you biology for the grammar stage by elemental science. There's not too much out there on YouTube about this program and so I really wanted to give you a look at it, the teacher guide, the student workbook, and some of the books that you will need that are kind of required for this program. So before I jump into the teacher guide and student workbook, I wanted to show you some of the books. Now, this program gives you two options for books. It gives you uh, options for older kids and younger kids. This program is meant to be used for first through fourth graders. Here we have the required book list. Um, you have to choose one of these for the animals unit, either the Kingfisher First Encyclopedia of Animals or the DK Encyclopedia of Animals. And it says the first one is K through second and the DK um, is best for second through fourth. I did go with all of the, um, the easier ones or, you know, the K through second or whatnot. Um, and then the human body unit, you have to choose the DK first human body encyclopedia, best for first through third or the Kingfisher Science Encyclopedia, best through fourth through six. Even though this only goes up to fourth grade, I guess if you had a fourth grader, you'd wanna get that Kingfisher one. Uh, the plants, you need um, Bachelor Science Biology, Life as We Know It, best for first through fourth, or the Usborne Science Encyclopedia, best for third through fifth. I'm actually going to be using this program with my second and fourth grader. They will be in second and fourth grade next year. And so that's why I went with the ones I did. Um, even though the first animal encyclopedia, you know, only goes through second um, and the human encyclopedia goes through third, it, that's what it's best for. But these two uh, uh, right here, um, I went through for the basher one because it's best for first through fourth rather than this one that's best for third through fifth. And then you need both of these um, Janice Van Cleve's demonstration books. One is Biology for Every Kid and Science Around the World. So let me just show you these. Now, I will say I was super excited because I was able to get these two books from Thrift Books for free because I had two free credits. So that was pretty awesome. So I got the Janice Van Cleve's Biology for Every Kid. So these have experiments in it that you'll be referred to in the program. And then the Biology as We Know It. So I got these for free. And then these three books I actually purchased from Amazon, but I actually had earned a $75 Amazon gift card through my works health insurance. It, which is kind of strange, but I won't complain. And so I was able to purchase all these three books plus a little workbook for my preschooler plus a thinking tree book. So I got these all for free. So really I got all these extra books for free. So that worked out pretty well. Okay, so I have the DK First Human Body Encyclopedia. Make sure you get this version. There's an older version too. Make sure you get this one with the gymnast on the front. But um, anyway, that's just like it sounds, a human body encyclopedia. And then we have the Kingfisher First Encyclopedia of Animals, and this is quite nice. And then we have the Janice Van Cleve Sci uh, Science Around the World, Activities on Biomes from Pole to Pole. You will be using this book at the beginning of this program. So if you could find this at your library, you could actually probably get away with just borrowing it from your library for a few weeks at the beginning of this course. So that's just a little tidbit too. Okay, so those are the books you need for this program for the younger grades. And now let's take a look at the teacher guide. So biology for the grammar stage is a classical curriculum program, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's well-trained mind, top recommended. And we have the contents here. So you're going to be doing 20 weeks on animals. And then you'll be doing um, 10 weeks on the human body and then six weeks on plants for a total of 36 uh, weeks. So a regular, you know, regular school year. And this talks about scientific demonstrations. And I just wanted to read this part to you. It says these demonstrations are designed to give them a beginner's look at the scientific method and how scientific tests work. It is not necessary to ask them to predict the outcome of the demonstration as they have no knowledge base to determine what the answer should be. So they kind of make a little differenti differentiation here between science demonstrations and science experiments. Um, these really, the demonstrations are really kind of parent-led, but of course you can let your kids participate as much as they are able. And then we have um, 
notebooking. There's all kinds of things you can do in here. So let me kind of break it down. So we have science-oriented books. So um, not only do we have those books that are required, but there's also additional books listed each week that you can check out from your library if you want to do even more. And then um, we have notebooking, which is included in the student workbook, and I'll show you that. And it, I wanted to point this out that I suggest that you read over these pages monthly so that the students get a review of what they have been learning. And then there's going to be multi-week projects and activities in every unit. There's going to be memorization that I'll show you also, which I love that part. There's possible schedules, there's quizzes, and then there's coordinating products, which is biology for the grammar stage lap booking templates. I do have those. I don't know if we're going to lap book. Um, as of now, we haven't really been lap book people, but I have them in case we decide to use them. And then I, and then I also have the biology for the grammar stage coloring pages. And I figured that I will probably primarily use those for my three-year-old because she likes to be included in everything we do. And so that'll give her something to color in while the girls are working on their workbooks. Okay, so there's also a uh, blog and there's um, different articles and the basics of notebooking. So there's all kinds of articles on the elementalscience.com slash blog. And you can go there. And then there's additional resource, resources on that blog as well with quick links to the activities. And then we have the required books book list that I just went over. But then there's the additional books listed by week. So if you're trying to prep ahead and you don't want to have to flip through to the week, you can go right here to the beginning and you can see exactly what books that are suggested. These are all optional. None of these books are required at all to complete the program, just those ones that I showed you at the very beginning. Um, I just kind of went through and, and marked the ones I already own, so I do own some of them already. And then we have a supplies needed by week. You can also buy a supply kit from Elemental Science, but um, you can also just kind of look ahead and see what supplies you need each week. So then we get into the animals unit. And at the beginning of the unit, you'll see that we have um, a breakdown of the weeks, the books that you will need for this unit, and then the animal poems to memorize. So you'll just be working on this memorization throughout this whole unit, so throughout the 20 weeks. And then we have the supplies needed for each unit, which is kind of redundant from the beginning, but again, it just breaks it down. So if you're going here, animals unit, you can see, okay, this is what I'm doing, These are, this is what I'm memorizing, this is what I need, and that sort of thing. And then we have the unit vocabulary also defined for you. And then we get into week one. And so this is where we really get into the, the depth of the lesson plans here. So it tells us the supplies needed, the purpose, the instructions, and take it further. So there's always more that you can do with this program. It has the reading uh, assignments. It has an optional additional topic to explore this week, which is communication. And this week we have discussion questions, the optional additional books for the, that are the same in that list I showed you up front. And then the writing assignments, the narration page, the optional lap book, the vocabulary. Again, that was also right there at the beginning. And then we have our multi-week projects and activities. So in this unit, they're going to be doing an animal diet chart throughout the whole 20 weeks. And then there's projects for this week, coloring pages, um, animal diet, have the students make the food mobile shown on page 12 of the Kingfisher First Encyclopedia of animals and so if we go to page 12 then we can see that right there so that is just something extra that you can do um, and then we have a weekly quiz and the answers to that quiz and then we have possible schedules for week one. So they give you a two day schedule and a five day schedule. However, you can really break this up however you want. Um, but it, it has little check boxes. I love that, very simple and easy to follow. So let's just go over the two day schedule. If you do day one, you'll read about the desert grasslands and rainforest. And when it says read about it, what that means is you need to go back over here to, um, the reading assignments. And so it says read about the deserts, grasslands, and rainforest. And so you're going to need these two books, the Kingfisher Encyclopedia of Animals and the DK Encyclopedia of Animals. And it tells you the pages for deserts, grasslands, and rainforest. And um, 
and uh, desert and grassland and rainforest. And it also gives you a note, you will need to read about the deserts, grasslands, and rainforest habitats from one of the additional suggested books or from the Janice Van Cleef Science Around the World. So when it says read about, that's what you need to go back to is this reading assignment page. So that can confuse people, and so I wanted to point that out. Um, complete the narration page for this week. That's in their student workbook. Work on the Habitat Diorama Project. Uh, read about food. Add information to the animal diet chart. Define herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. And then um, take the animal quiz. And so, of course, we have our vocabulary defined here. So if you don't know, there it is for you. Um, and let's see. And then um, this is the five-day schedule. So it just essentially breaks it down even farther. So same activities, just breaking it down. So not as much to do each day. And so each week looks just like that where you've got the um, supplies, the purpose, instructions, taking it further, reading assignments, discussion questions, notebooking, all of that. Okay, and then we've got the multi-week projects and activities, the coloring sheets, and then here we have the Planet Earth DVD series. It says watch the BBC Planet Earth series with the students. Um, so you, you know, if maybe your library has that, and of course the quiz, the two-day and the five-day schedule. Um, something I wanted to point out is there are different opportunities for use for you to use a microscope. You don't have to have a microscope during this, but um, it would be quite fun to have a microscope, and which we do. We got it from Goodwill, so I suggest checking out your local thrift stores. Um, we got it very cheaply, and we just needed to purchase a new light for it, which was really cheap on Amazon. So that is um, a great thing to be thinking about. But if there's uh, tells you when to start um, memorizing things here, so you don't memorize anything that first week, and it's very good here and it has a link and includes it right in the book for you okay so those are laid out the same way every week and then we have the appendix so we have an animal diet chart placement guide so that way if you're not sure well what is a chameleon is it a carnivore an omnivore or herbivore well it, you can look right here and it will tell you um, or if you're not sure which habitat the animal goes in, well, here you go. You can um, look right here and you can know, okay, an alligator should go in the rainforest because they'll be making their habitat posters as that unit project. So, And then we have these habitat backgrounds to print out and make a little diorama with. Everything, all the directions and everything are all in here. In here. Then we have an animal observation sheet. We have a bird feeder book. So these are kind of things that you will need throughout the program to print out. Butterfly life cycle cards, microscope worksheet, body organizing cards, joints, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so nature walk sheet, types of roots. So these are pages that I've just included in this book, but these are something that we might actually print out multiples of if we do multiple nature walks or we do... Um, you know, multiple microscope projects, that sort of thing. But I just um, printed out one copy so you guys could see this. And then we have the glossary. And then we have general templates where we have a project record sheet. And then we have the two day a week schedule and the five day a week schedule. So if you want to change it up a, a bit, you can use these templates. You can print them out right, out, right on them and use them yourself. Then we have the student workbook. And again, we have the animals unit and the human body unit and the plants unit. And then we have our animal diet chart here. I just showed you that placement guide in the teacher manual. And so this is the notebooking. So each day as they're reading something, then as you read about the desert habitat afterward, they'll write whatever they remember, whatever they think was important about the desert and the grassland and the rainforest. Um, that week, they'll do their lab report for their habitat diorama. They can draw a picture or you can take a picture and glue it in and what they learned. So really, this lab report is very, very simple. It's not like a real scientific lab report that you would see in the upper grades. Um, but then we get we get into the next week and we can see that it gets a little more lab report-ish, if you know what I mean. Our tools, our method, our outcome, our insight. But as you can see, each week... We have the notebooking for the different animals and the lab report. So that's really how this looks. There's the life cycle of a frog, that sort of thing. 
And it's kind of nice when there's some sort of chart or something needed that it is already kind of put there for you so you don't have to make it. I do like that. Uh, my picture family tree. A plant growth chart. So this is something that will be taking the course of the whole six weeks of your plant unit. So you'll be using that throughout. And then we have the notebooking and the lab report pages for the plants. And then at the back, we have the glossary. This is where each week, when it tells them to define something, they'll come to the back of their book, find it in their book, and then write the definition. So at the end, they'll have a nice little um, biology glossary all done for, you know, that they'd made themselves. And then we have the memory work. Again, it's right in their workbook, so the kids can turn to their workbooks, and you can practice your characteristics of mammals poem or whatnot. And then we have the human body poem, the plants unit poems, and then we have project pictures. So again, this is something that if you're actually printing this out for yourself, you don't really even need to print this out for the workbook because they'll be using these for projects and so they won't actually be staying in here. Um, and for example, like I might print this on cardstock instead, but for the sake of showing you guys, I have it in here. Um, you know, I don't mind wasting three pages of paper. And then we have the quizzes. Now you might want to keep the quizzes out of the student book. Again, this is just the printable book, but you can buy these already bound and made. Um, but if you have more than one child, it might be more cost effective to print them out yourself if you have a good printer as I do. Um, Okay, and so then it gives the quizzes here. As you can see, they're very simple. They're like true and false, circle the correct answer, and then it always says, what is the most interesting thing you learned this week? So these quizzes are very, very basic. So, you know, did they get the main points? You know, circle all the characteristics of a fish. All right, and that's it. So that is what that looks like, but this teacher guide goes so in depth with all the different things you can do with the the taking it further and the video links and the multi-week projects. And so you could really spend a lot of time on this or you could just spend a little bit of time on this. And it, um, it really just depends on what you want to do. Oh, here's an example of an optional microscope work. Uh, purchase a prepared slide of brain cells to look at under your microscope. Complete a microscope worksheet found on page 192 of the appendix. If you do not own a microscope, you can view brain cells at the following website. So um, really, this can get super interesting, super in depth, or just very basic if you just wanna use the books and, and do the scientific demonstrations. Um, you can really make this what you want it to be. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. I have used this program in the past with my now seventh grader going into eighth grade when she was, and I think she was fourth grade, and we did it with our um, homeschool co-op, so I am you know, a bit familiar, although this is an updated edition, and I must say I do like the updated edition better. So if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks for watching.